Welcome to Crypto Channel Direct. Today I have the pleasure of having Cor Kellstrom, who's the CTO of Concordium. And Cor and I are going to be speaking about the new plans for Concordium's ID framework. Welcome, Cor. Thank you, Claire. Cor, everybody knows that Concordium has the ID layer built at the protocol level. Can we start by just talking a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And we've had that uh, since the beginning, since we lost last, uh, launched last year. The, the thing we have right now is the ability for anyone who, uh, who goes on Concordium to go through an IDV process. And actually, you have to do that to get an account. Once you have it, you have a digital ID in your wallet. And then for every transaction you do, your ID will be, uh, it will not be in the blockchain, but there'll be a reference, an encrypted reference to that ID. This allows us, if law enforcement comes knocking and saying that something illegal might be going on, we, we have the ability to call on external parties to unlock uh, the transaction by way of multiple keys. So there's not like a single person who can do this, but there's this ability. And I know that you're working on a new version. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what's happening there? Yeah, so the fact that we already have the ID in the wallet allows us to do certain things. Um, we just haven't gotten around to building that before now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what you can do when you have uh, a digital ID in a wallet is you can you can build applications that can ask questions of the user, mm. um, and and so we're going to leverage that. Yeah. Uh, we're basically going to allow uh, D apps to start asking questions of the user. Um, for instance, are you older than eighteen? Um, are you from a certain country, certain region? I would like to know your name, and then the user has the ability to actually decide whether or not to give this information away to the D app. So you get self-sovereign uh, identification, right? Yeah. You basically you control your uh, ID attributes, yes. and and um, it's not like you have to give away your birth date. Um, it, if it's not necessary, which it isn't in many cases, right? You can just give away. Um, you know your age yeah. and we use what's called zero knowledge proofs to to do this interaction that the application gets a zero knowledge proof and can then validate the claim uh, to be true or false and it can see that the the claim was based off an attribute that came from a passport that was issued by someone in some country mm. um, and can even see who who did the identity verification but it cannot necessarily see anything else than the attributes in Proof. So if we look at the opportunities and also user cases, can you give me some examples of where could, where could this be used? Absolutely. So uh, there, there are a ton of places. Gaming, online gaming, for instance, is, is a, a space, right? Uh, some games that require you to have a certain age. Today, it's not something you can check. Um, you just allow people in and they just have to click a button and say you're older than something. We can actually check that and, and we can restrict uh, certain games to people who are underage. Um, we can also use it in, in, uh, in chat situations when people have been playing online games with someone and they decide to meet up in real life. Now there's a real danger, right? Because you mm -hmm. don't know actually who's behind the avatar name or whatever it is. Yeah. You might have had a good time online, but it's not given that you might have such a good time when you meet them in real life. Yes. But with uh, something like Concordium's ID framework, you can actually prove age and name, um, which make, makes this much more uh, safe and, uh, and, and um, easy on parents also to, to allow things like this. Yeah, yeah. And then of course there's the um, uh, gambling, which is a, a big deal as well. Online gambling where people need to be older than 18 to enter a casino and if they have a gambling problem, they can sign up for these blacklists mm. uh, so that uh, you know, they can be um, blocked from going into the casino if the urge comes over them and they, mm. they, they suddenly can't control it. This is something we can build with blockchain and Concordium ID as well. And then there's Metaverse and, and so many other areas where, yeah. where identity and age and name and location matters. So you're working on that right now, but what can we expect in the future? Yeah, so, so what we have right now is 1.0. We're rolling out 2.0 in the fall here. And then uh, in parallel, we are designing what we call Web3 ID. So that's the, the new name for the, for the full-fledged uh, mm -hmm. version. In the full-fledged version, we will allow any number of uh, what we call identity issuers to onboard. And identity issuers will be the companies or entities that will issue you some kind of um, verifiable credential like your uh, company card or your university diploma or anything else, right, mm -hmm. other than your legal ID, which we already have. So we can, we can allow anyone on board on, on that. And in your wallet, you can then have any number of verifiable credentials. Uh, again, think, about, think of it as a Google wallet or a web wallet um, kind of situation like the Android wallet. Um, and and uh, that's the metaphor you're looking for, like the cards that you have there that have certain information on them. Yeah. And then we, we, we built on this infrastructure um, or this idea that was, uh, that was coined um, some months back called Soulbound Tokens. Um, to control the life cycle of all of this. So, so the soul bound tokens are actually on-chain uh, entities that represent some of this information. The information won't be on-chain, but there will be an anchor um, on the chain um, right. for this information. So we can basically, 
you know, created and destroyed again when, mm. when needed. And when do you think that these will be available? So um, the design is, is in full swing and we, we aim to have like the full design ready uh, before the get-go of Q4. So mm -hmm. in Q4 we'll start building this and, and the aim is to release it in early uh, 2023. Fantastic, we look forward to that. And in the meantime, if somebody wants to find out more, they can of course go to concordium.com. Absolutely, yes. Thank you so much, Cole, for Thanks. today. Thanks, Claire.